All right, everybody, welcome back to I Didn't Read Your Book. Again, not a podcast episode, just hopping in to let you know that I was on the Inside Crypto podcast uh, talking about my journey just in the past seven months from knowing absolutely nothing about crypto to, uh, well, you'll have to listen and find out, Inside Crypto. Thanks for letting our listeners and viewers get to know you. I know privacy is a core tenant of the crypto community, but I'm a big believer in transparency. Just so everyone knows, I didn't vet Adam before the show. I don't even know his story. So whatever happens in this episode will be my pure and honest reactions. All right, Adam, let's get into it. Um, Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, bringing me on to the uh, platform to share my story. Um, I, uh, my name is, uh, Adam. I do go by Lutch on my show. Uh, I didn't read your book. It's the, I didn't read your book podcast. You can find that on, uh, YouTube, Google, uh, Google podcast, Apple, Spotify, all that stuff. And, um, I just, uh, bring on, uh, authors whose books I have not read. Um, so that you and I as, uh, viewers or listeners together can get a little bit of context on their work. Um, and learn about the author behind the book. And uh, it seems to be a good platform for them. And uh, what I've been finding out so far uh, from actually doing a, a, uh, a solo segment before the interview where I literally read the back of the book and judge a book by its cover, <laughs> uh, that often uh, uh, doesn't lead you to uh, what actually you'll find in between the covers. So uh, it's been great so far. I just started a couple uh, months ago, but uh, it's been uh, going really well and uh, I'm really hoping to grow it. Um, So who was the last person that you spoke to just out of curiosity? So the last person I spoke to was a uh, gentleman named Darshan who uh, wrote a book called Girlfriend versus Wife Duties. Um, And uh, it was just basically uh, something that, you know, he was a very well accomplished man in the, the, uh, the dating sphere uh, and just using that knowledge to, uh, not necessarily say one is better than the other, but this is what men are looking for from a girlfriend. This is what men are looking for from a wife. Uh, uh, and you know, with, with whichever one you want to be, that's what, you know, you should do if you want to be in this category or that category. Um, and then he actually, uh, he wrote that book nine years ago and then has since transitioned into, uh, writing children's books. So I'm actually going to have him back on for another episode. Uh, to talk about the children's books, because you know the wh- while uh, the the uh, girlfriend versus uh, wife duties book isn't anything um, you know anything dirty or anything like that, I figured if we're going to be talking about uh, children's books, we might want to keep those a little bit separate because it uh, you know just keeping it family friendly. Oh, that that makes total sense. And, and a- another question, I mean, regarding your podcast, I mean, what made you? come up with the idea of this particular podcast and I haven't read your book as such a like a really catchy title and I... thank you yeah well I um I you I had an old podcast uh that I just I mean I did audio uh but I would throw the episodes up on YouTube with just like a still uh thumbnail um and it was just a long form conversational uh podcast and uh it was myself and a co-host uh sometimes we would bring a guest sometimes it would ju- just be he and I Um, and I think we had, you know, really good conversations, uh, but you have to, if you're going to have two and a half hour conversations that aren't about any specific thing, you kind of got to be a Joe Rogan for people to, to want to sit down and buy into that before they know what it is. Uh, so while I think they were great conversations, not many people had heard them. Um, and then I had, uh, you know, uh, that you know, that podcast fell off a little bit. Um, and I, through listening to other people's podcasts and, and, and YouTube channels and, and, uh, all this kind of stuff, uh, everybody's, you know, got a book that they're mentioning. And because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, um, I'm also a uh, dog trainer. I don't remember if I already said that, but, uh, private dog trainer. So I'm always in my car driving from client to client. So whether I'm at home or I'm in the car, I'm always, uh, listening to somebody in my ear. Uh, whether I'm watching YouTube channels about uh, money or, uh, uh, you know, even if it's uh, just sports and, and and comedy and stuff like that, 
Um, or if I'm in the car, I'm listening to like political podcasts and, and stuff like that. Always trying to to uh, to build. And um, I'm j I just like when when am I supposed to read these books? I'm hearing about all these people and all these books, but when am I supposed to do all this? And you know, as a kid, I I used to love reading, and um, you know, I would read anything. Um, but then you know, I wasn't a great student, so once school came around and they were like, "You got to read this," I was like, "No," um, and I just kind of fell off of it. And then, you know, as I said, I'd gotten into, uh, consuming content in this way. Um, so it was just a, it came to me when I was just like, I, I, I literally said it out loud while I was watching a, uh, a, a podcast or an interview or something like that. And somebody was talking about their book and I was like, dude, I didn't read your book. And I was like, Oh, and I, you know, it's, it's just like, what better way to get informed on, uh, what people are talking about than talking them to them directly. Now, of course, that is not uh, going to be a, a, a substitute for reading their book, but it definitely helps. You know, uh, you know, pick a category. There's a million books in that category. In the nichest of niche categories, there's there's so much to read. So, I figured, you know, giving the uh, uh, the author a way to stand out as a person you know, in this new type of attention economy, if somebody is a fan of you, they're more likely to consume your work. And, um, you know, like I said, I just started, but, uh, it seems to be going really well and, uh, I have uh, high hopes for it. It sounds really interesting. And like I said, such a catchy Thank title you. and Thanks. something I'd definitely be interested in, in partaking. I, I'm going to have to subscribe to it, you know, as we get off this show. So this is the Inside Definitely. Crypto Show. So we talk about crypto, people's journeys into crypto, specific technical topics sometimes. So, I mean, we find each other on Reddit and I'm really, really interested in your journey into crypto and how you started. Um, I mean, do you want to just take it from there and I mean, start wherever yeah, you well, want to start? Sure. Um, I mean, I, like many people, um, have been aware of uh, crypto long before I actually got into the market. Um, I don't know that I, I couldn't tell you when I first heard about it, but I mean, it was definitely, you know, somewhere around 2012, 13, somewhere around there, probably sometime. I mean, I guess it must have been around the the uh, the last that, that uh, bull run that was um uh, and, and around that time. Um, but you know, I, I wasn't really in that, uh, you know, in that space of, uh, thinking about finance on a bigger, uh, uh, level just because I really, I didn't have any, I was, um, if I, I, if I was in college at the time or I, I was right out of college, um, I graduated in 2012 from University there, um, and uh, you know, I I I, uh, I was just you know serving tables, working uh, just for beer money, and you know some other stuff that uh, you know kind of took me off course and uh, consumed a lot of my uh, time and money. Um, and so you know, thinking about investing in anything just wasn't on my mind. Um, and so since then, you know, I've cleaned up my life and, uh, I started doing the, the, uh, dog training, uh, and not only does that, uh, pay better, but it also has, uh, allowed me to distance myself from a, you know, uh, that, that type of environment. There's just, it, there's just too much access to stuff that I shouldn't have access to, uh, working in nightlife. Um, and, uh, some people have, I guess, better, uh, self-control than I do, but, uh, uh, you know. It was, uh, it's not like I can't have alcohol or anything in the house, but being around it every night just wasn't a, uh, a, a good thing. So being out of that world, making a little bit more money now, I'm, you know, I'm, I've actually got money in my savings account and, uh, you know, we're talking about like just, uh, uh, right around, you know, the, the lockdown time, right about, uh, 20, 2020. Um, so this is very recent, um, turning, you know, like all of this, turning my life around, getting a new job, working, uh, uh, and, and, and actually, uh, having some savings. And it's funny because I'm, uh, also a big UFC fan. And, uh, for, for years, I've always just, uh, whenever there is a UFC card on, they, they, you know, they always post the, the, uh, the thing on Instagram with all the, all the bouts, all the fights. And, um, I was never a, uh, gambler, you know, I, I'm from Jersey. I've been to AC a bunch of times, but I always lose money. So, uh, yeah. I, I don't really, uh, gamble too much, but I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm picking 
you know, I, I know the sport and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm picking pretty well. Maybe it's worth, you know, actually betting on this stuff. And as an addict, I'm very glad I didn't go down that road. I don't know where I would have ended up if I did, but um, I, I I just didn't. And then I, um, I I had been talking, I had been, you know, I had like an ongoing conversation with uh, one friend in particular who, um, you know, was, was really pushing like, yo, you, you should, you should look into this. You should, you should do this. Um, and, you know, he's a, he's a big uh, Ada gang guy. Um, and uh, he just was, it was like, why not? And we were talking about it and I was just like, eh, you know, I was indifferent. I just didn't get it. And it wasn't until he explained it. I, I think, I believe he shared a video. I don't know if it was his word specifically. It might've been like an Andrew Jake video or, or uh, something like that, but somebody framed it in the sense of, and again, I, I wasn't a stupid person. I, I, I uh, by any uh, stretch of the imagination, when it comes to money and finances, I just didn't, I, I didn't do a lot of searching and learning. Um, and so, so I was just blissfully ignorant. Uh, so, you know, I, I mean, you know, obviously I knew what inflation was and, and how all that works and interest and, and basic things, you know, if I have a credit card, I pay bills, I, you know, I'm an adult in the world. Um, but just like a lot of no coiners, I just didn't have that, uh, that experience. And, um, yes, when the, the, the video framed it so that I understood that my newfound savings that are now, uh, that's that my savings account that now doesn't read zero, that money just by sitting there is losing its value. It just, it being put that way. I was like, I got to get rid of this stuff. Cause it, and, 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 you know, again, this was uh, the concepts of inflation, everything. I knew all of that. I, <clears throat> Excuse me. I knew they were uh, printing money like crazy, but it wasn't until he, uh, th th this friend, and, and these videos connected all the dots that I was like, "Oh, I get it. I get it." And um, I think one of the biggest barriers was just like it felt like I needed to know everything. I mean, I didn't even know that at that time that you didn't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. Um, and so, you know, I, I started looking into it and, uh, and it was March 20th, 20, was it this year? Yeah. March, uh, 20th this year that I bought my first, uh, Bitcoin at, uh, 59K, something like that. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, it was uh, ironically, well, I don't know if it's ironic, but it was, it was about, um, five, six weeks before the big crash. And I had, you know, uh, before that I, you know, started learning and, um, even on my, uh, on my YouTube channel, I have a playlist that's, that's public to anybody and just named crypto and every video since I had that conversation, uh, uh, with, with my friend and decided I was going to start learning about it and, um, knowing that the, the barrier that learning was such a big barrier to, barrier to entry. I wanted other people to be able to find uh, easy access, you know, find that on ramp so that they could, you know, learn. Um, so every video that I've ever watched that I've found helpful on crypto is in that uh, uh, playlist. And um, uh, it started with a BitBoy uh, uh, um, uh, video with some some girl, I don't know, and she didn't know anything. It just happened that he was starting a, a Bitcoin for beginners uh, uh, series. And uh, so I hopped on that. And uh, yeah, I learned enough to realize that you don't have to know everything about crypto to to be, a, you know, to invest in this. And so, you know, I, I uh, learned uh, basically at that point, I think I... Um, I was ready to uh, buy some Bitcoin, some Ethereum, and uh, some Cardano. Um, and I don't know, I don't remember specifically if I bought, if I did all of those on, on the 20th. I'm I, I, knowing me, I probably did, but um, mm -hmm. just because it was my first purchase, I wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted it to be Bitcoin and, uh, uh, you know, mark down the day. Um, so that's really where I was ready to put in a couple hundred dollars just to let it, you know, just to see, get myself used to, uh, uh, watching the trends, watching the charts and, and seeing what happens, just see what the experience is of being in the market. Um, and I, I, I among that research, 
um, was uh, Anthony Pomp, Pomp saying, uh, um, you know, how how uh, how much do you trust it or, or something along those lines? One percent, 10 percent, 100 percent, whatever percent you trust it, put that much of your uh, worth into it. And so I was like, all right, I guess, you know, I could put in five percent of what I'm worth, which wasn't very much anyway. Um, and so I did that and I was, you know, I was happy. Everything was, was mooning. And, um, then the crash happened. And so when I was, when, when that happened, I had continued, you know, continued learning and, 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 um, you know, gathering information. And I realized that it was a, a very critical decision point for me because we likely were never going to see these prices again. And, so I was like, as a beginner, I, I understand that that is the case, but I'm such a beginner. I don't know what I don't know. Do I, do I, um, do I trust enough of what I've learned? Do I trust the people that I've been learning from enough that this, that, you know, they didn't know that this opportunity w was an opportunity for me, um, uh, that w was going to present itself. And, and, uh, you know, the, the, buy, if ever buy the dip then, then, uh, you know, that was, that was a dip to buy. And so I made the decision. I was like, okay, I, I, this isn't just a, a thing I'm doing. If I'm going to, if I'm going to get into this, there is no better time than now. And so I started, uh, DCAing into, um, different coins. Uh, and now I'm about, uh, about 90% in and I've got, uh, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, Cardano, uh, Solana, uh, Polkadot, um, and a few, a few other smaller ones I'm blanking on now, but, uh, yeah. How do your friends and family feel about you getting into crypto? Um, <laughs> I would, I, I wish I knew <laughs> I really, again, I really wanted to bring more people in as I was learning. I, I realized that, oh, it's just because people don't know if people understood then you know they would they would be put you know investing in this and uh so like i started a uh i had some friends on facebook who were into crypto already um and some people who i thought would be good candidates for you know having these conversations and and embarking on the journey for the first time like i was and so i made a facebook group and people just weren't really talking, I guess people were, you know, the people who, who, uh, were already in the market have their own places to talk, uh, with people. And then the people who weren't in the market just weren't getting out get any, getting anything out of the group. Um, I did have a couple people reach out to me and, um, I basically told them, you know, the, the, that, that story and, and, and sent them the playlist. And, uh, I have a couple people who, who have, um, you know, bought in, uh, because of what I've said. Um, I'm always telling them, you know, it's not financial advice and uh, I'm not responsible for any of it. Um, but I, I, uh, I, I wish I had more of feedback. I will say that, uh, my dad who, um, was reasonably worried about my future for, for a good chunk of time there. Um, he is, he is not, uh, you know, he doesn't necessarily trust the, the, the whole crypto space at all. But he is seems to be impressed with the level of commitment I've taken to learning about it, and he knows that if I if I do that with anything, that it's not gonna be you know a fad. It's not gonna be something like I'm gonna I'm gonna go hard. I'm gonna try to find every issue with it and every problem with it before I'm ready to part uh, ways with my money. Um, and so he actually, I, I, I almost got him to start a, uh, uh, a wallet, but he was like, how about I just give you 500 and, and you put it in for me? And I was like, Hey, that's, that's a start. That's a start. <laughs> that's true. Um, so, uh, I, one of the things we talked about as well was you mentioned that you've been sharing your journey and you've already said it as well, very publicly. Is there a reason for that besides wanting more people to get into the space or uh, why do you decide to document on IG and Facebook? Yeah. I, I mean, it's really just that simply that I, I felt, you know, as if somebody had done that the way that I'm doing it and I could have got in, in 2013 in 2012, I mean, my life would have been so much different already up until now. 
and and uh, you know, uh, no telling of the future. So I, I just I want that for people. And obviously, the more it it's a, a crypto in general is adopted, the better it is for for uh, people who are invested in it as well. But yeah, I, I really just it's like a hey guys, like really check this out. Like this is a real thing here. And and again, it's the 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 the, the learning the barrier to entry that just. I, I remember so distinctly because it was so recently the feeling of I'm never going to be able to, to figure this out. I'm never, you know, I'm not an accountant. I'm not, I'm not. And I'm a, I, I somewhat arrogantly believe that I'm a pretty smart guy. Um, and uh, I, I just, it just didn't seem uh, accessible to me. And I don't know if that is, um, I don't know if that is something that, that, I mean, it must be something that happens just organically because once you get into it, you get so into it and, and, you know, you leave the no, no coiners behind, but I just felt like I was in a unique position to, to, um, to share these, these few parts, you know, these specific parts of the journey that, that people will wonder about, because when you're a more seasoned investor or trader, then you'll be able to, uh, to speak on these things from, from past experience and, it's uh, again you when you already know all of the stuff it's hard to it's harder to relate that to somebody who has no idea what you're talking about and so when i can when i not only was i in the unique position to understand w as much or as little as they did at any given point what i was learning was only so far away from knowing nothing that it, it was it, it would have been easy to just hop on and be like wait so it goes like this and then like that like yeah dude it's that simple you just do this and that and then and then you know it's good and i can't tell you what's going to happen but it seems pretty uh, uh seems like it looks pretty good over the years nice uh another question that we you know, we talked a little bit before the show is you were thinking of exiting into usdc and I, I wrote as a question, you've already seen it as well, that, you know, the, the whole idea of HODL or keeping your crypto for the foreseeable long term. I mean, why would you think of exiting now? Um, is there a reason behind it or is it just you want to use the money for something else? So I, I'm glad you asked this because um, I, I would uh, I'm, I'd love to tell you what I'm thinking and have you uh, uh, get, just get your opinion. Um, sure. I, I'm, when, how, how long have you been in the market? Um, I started mining in 2017 and oh, wow. uh, got started investing with the mining profits beginning of 2020. Oh, so you started mining before you, uh, even you didn't uh, buy any. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, because electricity here is very cheap. We have uh, geothermal uh, in one of the islands here in Taiwan. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, so I actually got into what I didn't understand why. But it was a a, a heated uh, uh, discussion with the same friend that in, introduced me to um, the the crypto space in general about um, uh, hodlers uh, versus uh, traders, and you know my idea was just that okay if you know if everything runs in pretty predictable cycles then. Uh, why would I not want to ride the you know I, I don't want to be a day trader but. If the the trends are 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 uh, you know the the larger trends like the 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 having cycle and stuff like that are are so predictable, why not take take out the the, the profits, wait for the prices to go back down, and then slowly re-enter um, as uh, as, as the, the the prices start to climb again? And um, you know, I was he was like he almost got offended that I was calling myself an investor and talking about making these kinds of trades. And I, I just didn't understand it. Now, maybe you can, and, and we, he's, you know, we've since gotten into uh, other political arguments and we don't necessarily talk as much. Uh, and um, uh, so I never really got a clear answer on why it was so important to him to make that distinction between an investor and a trader. Um, and and it, it definitely seems like I, sh I struck a nerve by saying, well, I'm kind of doing a hybrid thing where, you know, I, I am going to be invested long term, but why not, you know, the same way you, 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 uh, uh, dollar cost average in, why not take out some, some profits and, 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 and ride the waves that, you know, are going to be there. So do you have any idea why he, he would, 
uh, get so uh, emotional at that? Is that a is that an expected response? I, I think that is an expected response. Um, so, I mean, this podcast is sponsored by the company I work for, but anything we say here is, of course, not connected to them. It's just my opinion. But like a lot of the people I work with are really, really hardcore crypto people, and they they do stuff that I really don't understand. I'm sort of uh, when I started investing, I was like really, really enthusiastic. And then I just got really, really tired really quickly. So now what I do is I sort of sort of put my money into crypto and I sort of set it and forget it. And but uh, and and a lot of people like that sort of goes with the hot alert, but that's not intentional. And mm -hmm. I totally agree with what you're doing as well as um, and you are on Reddit as well. So you see people saying, you know, take profits, don't just leave your money there and so, so I, I think it's a fantastic strategy and as to why your friend gets angry is because there is this really core group of uh, zealous crypto people who believe, you know, you need to hold the coin right until the very end, until all 21 million Bitcoin have been mined and the <laughs> price is potentially six figures. And that's the time that you're allowed to sell. Uh, and, and I think, you know, if you want to do that too, that's really cool. I mean, that's the, the wonders of crypto is that to each his own. Uh, if you need money now, why not? Um, and I think I would definitely recommend it, you know, with the way the world is going, you know, uh, supply shortages, COVID, that sort of stuff. It's always good to take money from your investments when you can. And um, that's great. So um, are you going to do anything with USDC or just keep it for reinvesting when the market hits a low cycle? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, at the... Uh... The at the so my the biggest mistake I made in um you know when the crash happened uh was not uh, you know I updated what I was what I planned on uh, doing in terms of entering but I didn't have a specific exit exit strategy so I've um you know that is, I guess a typical new mistake of uh you know I just I was like okay we'll see where it goes and then we'll uh, figure it out then. Um, I probably should have had some some price points that I wanted to to get out and and things like that. Um, but early, I mean, I really haven't touched anything um, in the last couple of months. I did a lot of buying over the summer, um, and um, you know, I I um, and and I moved, so I just had other uh, costs, and I you know, I I haven't used any money that I like need for rent or bills or anything. It's just been savings that I've put into uh, into crypto. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't touched anything too much lately, but the last time I was really, um, buying, uh, regularly, we were, uh, we were expected to be at hundred uh, K Bitcoin by now. So I, I would, and at least, um, so, you know, thinking with, with those numbers in mind, I was like, okay, at least I can take out, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm probably sitting with um, uh, about 30%, a little bit less than 30% of my portfolio as, as a uh, profit. And, um, so, uh, you know, the, the idea of getting out my original investment is something I think is one thing that sits there just as being new to the space and not being as comfortable with, uh, uh having my money, uh, not in dollars and just, you know, the way that I think about it. Um, and, and so it's like, as much as I believe in and trust in this, if I, if I get my uh, initial investment out, then no matter what, everything is, everything is profit. So even if it goes to zero, I already have that money. Um, but uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily take it all out. Like I would want to um, put it mostly into uh, USDC, get the interest, and then yeah, put it right back in. Um, if we had seen those kind of numbers that we were expecting, I likely would have uh, wanted to to take some uh, profit in fiat. Um, you know, just to 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 treat myself. You know, why not? I've never had money like that before. Uh, so that was the plan. Um, the way it's looking now, and I mean, again, I've never, uh, this is my first cycle, so I don't, I, I, it doesn't, you know, I'm still here in 100K Bitcoin by the end of the cycle. I, I have no idea. So I figure uh, when it, when it, when I'm happy with, with uh, where, where the market is in terms of, okay, this is 
high enough that if it goes higher, I'm comfortable with having exited and, um, you know, that, that it's high enough that, okay, I, I'm, I'm happy with these profits, you know, I'm not, not wanting, you know, that, 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 uh, price point that I should have, uh, thought of beforehand when, when I, wherever the, the, or I should say, however, the market moves, I'm, I'm watching closely to see, you know, where I want to get out before the peak because, you know, trying to time the market is, is, is uh, a fool's errand. And so I'd rather, you know, be a little bit early uh, than be too late. Um, and now looking at these prices, I probably won't take any profit out of the market. I'll just keep it in uh, USCC. And then uh, as the, the, uh, the cycle turns and prices drop again, I'll, I just want to put that money back in. Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, it's, it, it seemed, I, I, maybe if, if you can help me understand why m more people don't think like that and do have this, this hodl for, you know, uh, mentality and that, that it's blasphemy to, to, to do it the, the, the way that I'm talking about. I mean, I would imagine, and, and again, I don't, out of the people that I know, uh, I'm the most like sort of technical person that I know. And, and I would imagine these are the people who are into crypto because of the technology. And, and I'm into crypto as well, because I think the technology is a fantastic idea. Um, and for them, it's not just about making money. It's also about supporting the technology. It's about decentralizing banks, decentralizing health insurance, just the idea of decentralization. So um, if you're selling you know you're you're dipping the price and you're potentially telling people i don't believe in this technology that's why i'm selling and i i mean this is just a theory on my part so i'm yeah i mean it, it's it's a shame but i think that is something that will sort of help me bridge into the next question is that um you're a bit younger than me just from you graduated in 2012 i graduated from massachusetts jesus in twin 2006 and <laughs> how that's what I find. I'd love more people to get into crypto. I mean, and in your experience, you know, as you've talked to friends and, you know, you've spread, you know, talks about your story on Instagram and Facebook, what would be a good way or how do you think is a good way for people to get into crypto? Uh, yeah. Um, well, and, and I just want to uh, reiterate, you know, when I said I wish I knew when you asked uh, what my friends think, it's not that nobody has has given me any feedback. Uh, I was being a little bit facetious, and I, I mean, it's mainly the the group that that uh, I built that uh, didn't really go anywhere. Um, but um, I'm sorry, well, I, I completely forgot your question. What was it? What was the question? My basic question is, how can crypto be more accessible? Oh, yes. So... I think again, it just comes down to the 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 basic uh, elements that you need to learn. You know, what do you really need to to know about uh, crypto to to be confident to put some money in? You know, you need to understand uh, you know what the Federal Reserve is, what fiat currency is, how you know how uh, money money machine gober. Uh, you know, you need to um, understand what the uh, blockchain basically does. You don't need to understand what a node is or how a, a mine. Uh, you know how I don't know. I don't even know how people. I understand it's a computer process, but I don't. I don't know like what, if you were to say, hold on, I'm gonna go. Mine. I I don't know what that means. It, I I assume it's just some kind of program or something. But under uh, if people understood that you don't have to be that deep into it to dip your toe in, then uh, then I think a lot more people would would be open to adopting it. And I just think again, I think because people get do get so passionate about it, and once they learn uh, enough, they they go uh, uh, head first and and just dive in with both feet. I think it becomes too easy to to have that gap between the no coiners and even the beginners because again as somebody who is only in the market uh, uh, the latter half of this year I can I can hold this conversation I can I could talk to somebody about uh, you know different different I don't know not you know no, nothing too deep but I mean I can hold a conversation ab about crypto about money about finance about banking um, and, and stuff like that which I couldn't do before. And it's not that complicated. It can be, but 
the the you know that the complicated stuff you really only need to learn about it if you want to you know bitcoin it, it itself let's just take bitcoin you know just it being digital gold and understanding the same way that you know cuz that's probably the biggest question people have is what does it do or what does gold do it doesn't i mean in the in i mean obviously it you know conducts electricity and all that. But I mean, in today's world, we're not using gold like that. People don't invest in gold for its functionality. They use it for a store of value. And like, that's it. That's all you need to know. And I mean, that's not it. But if you, people could understand that there is a much more basic level of understanding that justifies confidence in them parting with their money, then I think they would be a lot more open to giving it a try and trying to see what it is instead of just clicking on some video and it's talking about uh, the whole process of how bitcoin works and why it's decentralized and then it just it's like okay i i know it's all very fundamental but it's just it's too much and i don't i don't i, I don't get it and and people just just shut off okay i think when oh, go ahead now, I, I, again, I, going back to just my own story, when it come when it came down to that specific uh, uh, visual in my mind of the, this money that I had for the first time, I put it in a, a what I you know I'm thinking is a savings account. It's gonna it's gonna grow because it's in a savings account, and having that visual of that money physically shrinking, um, obviously that's not actually how it works, but you know, uh, uh, in all, for all intents and purposes, that, that is how it works. And when I had that visual, that's all I needed. I was like, okay, now I need, now I know that I need to understand, uh, how to invest in something because I wasn't in the stock market and I, and, and I didn't have any kind of assets at all. Um, and the, uh, another big part of why I chose crypto and, uh, and to, as a starting point, um, was because I just feel like a lot of the reasons that uh, a lot of people get into crypto is not trusting uh, the the legacy banking uh, system, and and that's tied pretty uh, closely, as far as I can tell, which I don't know very much, but with the stock market and and all of that is very very much controlled uh, by people who don't care about my money. Whereas the, the whole uh, DeFi aspect is, is uh, what was like, uh, made me not just know that I have to invest, but decide that I want to stick to crypto, at least for now. All right. Um, I want to end up today on the last question. Um, so, I mean, we didn't, this is the first time I'm actually seeing you, but I saw your last name was Lachman and I was like, oh, you know, you're Indian, I'm Indian and we come from uh, what I would say is conservatively or, or, or investment cultures uh, even though I'm, I'm not first generation indian and i don't think you are either um no. <laughs> so but like when i i talk to crypto to people who are older like my parents or grandparents or that sort of stuff i feel like uh and especially i live in asia as well and and uh, asian people tend to invest very conservatively and we have i mean as you probably read in the news you know we have a increasing older generation here if and we just talked about so it. You not very many Dogecoin millionaires over there? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> not at all. Uh, if you had to, like you said, you, your dad gave you 500 and you put it in. Um, if you had to really get your dad or your mom into crypto, I mean, what do you think would be the, the bridging step or something you could do to bridge the experience for them? Or would there be anything? Or you think we just, we can't get this generation of people, people in their 50s or 60s or 70s to put a little bit of money into crypto? I think it, I think the, the fact that he was willing to put the, the, the money in, I, I think mentally he's there. It's just, uh, you know, physically dealing with the, the DEXs or anything. So I think if I just put, because uh, I mean, I'm, I'm still a noob, I'm still using Coinbase uh, and I know I got to get my money out of there, but I'm that's a whole other discussion, right? Um, but you know, if I were to just download uh, Coinbase or Gemini or something on his phone and buy him a dollar or whatever's worth of of uh, anything, then it just being there and then just wanting to check it and then just wanting to learn a little bit more about what's going on. Now you have some some vested interest, um, even if it's just a dollar, ten dollars, a hundred. Uh, you know, I mean you know, my dad's a lot more well off than I am. Um, so $500 to him is not the same as $500 to me, but 
you know, now because of crypto, five hundred dollars to me is not nearly it is not nearly as important as five hundred dollars was to uh, me a year ago. Um, and just getting, just getting, you know, that's maybe the the the, the biggest barrier I would say with uh, with older people is if they, you know, I, I would, I mean, I get, I'm I might be speaking out of turn here, but it. I have the idea based on my own experiences that older people are typically going to be in a better position where it's not like they, they, they have to do something. Whereas, you know, if you're uh, 25, 26, 27, 28, and you're not really doing anything with your life, you kind of have to do something. You kinda, And if you're already older, you probably have already made those moves and you probably are uh, in a position where obviously if you were invested in crypto, you'd probably better be better off, but not knowing what you're missing, you're, you're, you're fine. Um, I think people, uh, uh, you know, my age and younger are, are going to be more amenable to the risk. Um, and, and, uh, it, it's just, you know, it's not as, I, I think because it's really, I mean, people didn't really, I, I mean, I know it started in, in, uh, in what, 2009 or 2011, something like that. Um, but it, it wasn't really a household thing and it kind of isn't even yet. Um, not everybody knows about crypto, like knows what it is. I mean, um, and so it's just something new. Whereas with younger people, investing, finance, uh, real estate, all of that stuff is new and it's all new together to older people. They understand real estate to some extent. They understand the stock market to some extent. Um, you know, they understand bonds and yields and whatever else. Um, but and they're they're happy with that, but crypto is a whole nother thing, so they don't want to have to deal with that. I, I think that's that's really what it is. And again, bringing it down to hey, it's not that complicated, and and you only have to get complicated if if you want to. Then I think if we get that message out to people, young or old, uh, I think there'll be a lot more adoption. I think that that's a fantastic way to end off uh, today's show. So um, for those of you who weren't here or or, or who didn't pay attention to the beginning uh, adam's podcast is i haven't read your book and available pretty much everywhere i would imagine uh yes the it's uh i didn't read your book i didn't read the, your I, book. I didn't read your book podcast uh mainly it's it's a video podcast so the main experience is going to be on youtube um but you should be able to find it wherever uh you get your podcast uh you know spotify uh google apple uh pocket cast all those places um and you can also find me on social media uh instagram and twitter at uh i d r y b lutch like i didn't read your book oh, i d r y b lutch l u t c h Okay, and um, I'll, I'll make sure, uh, listeners and viewers, if you're listening, that you should be checking the notes on the podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, you should be looking at the show notes and the links and to find all of Adam's socials. And your YouTube channel name is the same IDYRB. It's just, I didn't read your book podcast. Yep. I didn't read your book podcast. So all just one word. Uh, no, just the, the uh, uh, all spelled out. Okay, cool. cool I cool. didn't. Very cool. Double check the uh, and uh, anything you want to say, Adam, before we end up today's show. Uh, anything else you want to plug? A, a, a future episode of I Don't Read Your Book. Um, sure. I actually, uh, yeah. Well, we, I, we talked uh, earlier about uh, Darshan, um, but his episode won't be coming out for a little bit. Uh, I've actually got an episode coming out uh, Wednesday. Airs every uh, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, and uh, I spoke with a. Uh, a trans woman who uh, wrote a book called So Much Fire and So Many Plans um, about a painter who uh, who traveled the world with, with her love um, who had died. And the story takes place of a uh, reporter trying to get the, the, the story there uh, from that painter. And, and, and that's her uh, story. Um, so again, the podcast itself isn't too much about the contents of the book because I didn't read your book, um, <laughs> but it is a, uh, a great way to get to uh, know the author. And then this uh, episode specifically, I uh, went out on a limb and I tried a little something because that I also I also would like to become an author one day. And um, I, I took a little bit of extra time to to ask her uh, about the the public uh, the writing the publishing process itself. 
Um, nice. And so there's a little bit extra in there. Um, and then, like I said, the uh, anybody you are trying to get into crypto, if you go to my channel, that uh, playlist is exactly what I used from not even knowing that you didn't have to buy one Bitcoin, that you could buy Satoshis, that you, I, I didn't know anything. The first video is called Bit, uh, Bitcoin for Beginners. And there's uh, probably about 40-ish uh, videos on there um, from a number of different sources. And it's not meant to be a you know a, 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 a catch-all for for everyone and every everything that's in crypto. It's meant to be very accessible. It's meant to explain things uh, that you know we have forgotten how to simplify because we're so familiar with them being so ingrained in the uh, the crypto space. Nice. Well, Adam, thank you very much for being on the show today. I really appreciate your time and, and the scheduling considering we're 12 hours apart. So it's uh, it's pretty cool that we got to get <laughs> things done. And yes, um, thank you. I I think I will figure out when to get the schedule. I'm one video behind. So um, hopefully this will be out next week at some point. Uh, definitely out next week at some point. And then maybe we right. can uh, chat again maybe in a few months to see what you think about crypto at the end of the year. I would I would absolutely love that. Thank you so much for having me. No problem.